Hello, my name is Dinner. In this video I'll show you how I do aluminium anodizing at home. I will anodize these aluminium tool holders, but some clips may be also from anodizing this knob. My goal is to turn this to something like that. There are a lot of information about on Google, but just in short about anodizing. Anodizing is some kind of making protection layer on aluminium parts. We can do it with or without adding a color. With anodizing process we make tiny holes on aluminium surface. Then add a color or not into that tiny holes and seal it back. With that process we can get amazingly nice finish and also protect aluminium part. Since anodized surface is more resistant to mechanical and chemical damage, so anodized surface won't scratch that fast and would not become oxidized even outdoor. Anodized aluminium can find all around us. Basically every aluminium part we bought is anodized, because raw aluminium got nice shine right after machining, but it's very delicate to scratch and after time it oxidized and become uglier than iron rust. There are many ways of anodizing process and a lot of details to get the result we want, like time, temperature, solution mixture and so on. I don't know, but I read somewhere the temperature of solution impact to end shine of anodized surface. In this video I show you how I do it at home, without special knowledge about anodizing. I only read a topic or two on the internet, and then learning on failures. Results become useful after 10th to 15th try, so just don't give up. My result is far from professional anodizing. Surface isn't that thick and not nearly as scratch proof as industrial one. But you can see here the tool I analyzed years ago is still in great shape, and that's good enough for me. If I need more parts or better result, I send the parts to anodizing company. Anodizing service is quite cheap. Ok, let's start now with a list of things we need for home anodizing. We work with very aggressive acids, so first of all we need safety equipment. Glove, mask and glasses are very important. I get here plastic tweezers to take parts out of acids. Pot for seal the parts. At least 3 bowls, which need to be glasses or plastic and no other material some aluminium wires and rods to connect the parts, electrical gas burner to cook the parts, some pigment colors like eatable colors, dye colors for clothes or egg colors and so on, a container with distillated water, I just used the one from clothes dryer and most important acid solutions. First one is sodium hydroxide, second one is nitric acid and most aggressive sulfuric acid. There are no joke with that acid, seriously. That's a solution I use, but some of them can be replaced with others. Please don't ask me where to buy, because every country got a bit different laws about acids, I think. But H2SO4 can be a bit harder to get. I already got mixed acids here, so if you buy 100% acid you'll need to mix with distillated water. And remember a triple A rule, always add acid into water and no water into acid. Sodium hydroxide is 5% solution, so there is 95% water. Nitric acid is 50% solution and sulfuric acid is 20% solution. For anodizing we need also a power supply with settable voltage and current, and some wires to connect the parts. Ok, I got everything prepared for anodizing. Now it's the last options to finish the aluminium parts. We can send it with sandpaper, polish or whatever. Just to know, anodizing make transparent surface, so if there's a tiny scratch on the part it will be visible also after anodizing. I got already prepared parts, so I just blow them with compressed air and wipe it with alcohol. Next step is connect the part to aluminium wire or rod. I seen a lot of people just hang the part to aluminium wire, but it didn't work for me. It just lose electrical connection between wire and part and the middle of process, so I need to repeat from beginning. If there at least one treat, I use the rod with treat. Screw the part on and tie it well. Work every time. Spot welder may be good also, but you need to know that a spot where the wire or rod touch the part will not be anodized, so attach it to some hidden place on the part. Parts are now finished, cleaned and fixed on aluminium rod, so we can put safety equipment on and from here we don't touch part with bare hands anymore. Now the first step is to edge the part. To do that simply soak the part into 5% sodium hydroxide for about 10 to 30 minutes. It will clean the surface of aluminium. More time you soak into acid, more aluminium will be, will be etched. If you soak for too long, some small treat like M2 can be damaged, so smaller treat cut after anodizing. When the part is into sodium hydroxide, you should see something like that. The bubbles should go and cough the part all the time. 
and the acid become dirtier. Mine is already used a few times, so it become yellow. During the process you can shake the part here and there, so you remove some catched bubble, which prevent contact between acid and part. After about 20 minutes I take the part out of sodium hydroxide and rinse into destillated water. As you see the parts become completely black, it depends on the aluminium alloy type. Some types of aluminium become completely black, while other not at all. Now it's time for step 2. Prepare the container with nitric acid and soak the part into. But make sure you rinse them with water. Never put the part direct from one to other acid, every time rinse the part with water. Nitric acid will remove the black film on the part instantly, but you can leave it soak for a minute. Then again rinse the part with water and you should see something like that. Nicely white etched aluminium part. Sodium hydroxide make nice surface on aluminium. If I soak it for about an hour, all the traces from milling will disappear, but all the meshes of part will change also. Rinse with water again and then prepare the container for step 3. Into plastic or glass container put some cathode. You can use some wires or any aluminium part. I just cut some sheet of aluminium which fit into my container. A piece of sheet come out of container so I can connect the wire on. Now take the part out of water and hang it into container. Be careful so the part won't touch the bottom of container or the cathode. I also tilted the part a bit so the air bubbles can rise up. If some bubbles stuck on the part, spot will not be analyzed. We can prevent that with air pump, so it mixes the solutions and the bubbles to get more evenly anodized layer, but I don't use that. After we get part in its position, we can pure sulfuric acid into container. Make sure that the acid is covered the part you're anodizing and that the part won't touch the bottom of container or cathode. Now plug the power supply and set the voltage to about 12 volts. Negative wire connect to cathode and positive to anode. I anodized two parts at once, so I used two positive wires, each connected to one rod. As I said, there are many details in anodizing. One of them is current, which is calculated by some formula which includes surface size of part we want to anodize, but I simply limit current to 1 amp, which is effective and not too high so it heat up the acid. If everything is ok, we should see tiny bubbles slowly going from the part or anode and a bit bigger bubbles from a cathode. Leave like that for about an hour, more time you'll anodize, more thick the anodized layer will be. If bubbles stop going from the part, it means that you lose connection between the part and positive wire. During process you can shake a few times to release all the catch bubbles. If possible make that step outside, because while anodizing some acid evaporate into air and when drop on some steel surface it will rust. So if you do that in workshop like I do, protection mask is a must and cover the container to stop evaporating. Open window also help, that acid is a hell, so don't even think to touch it with bare hand and if it drop to the clothes it make hole in few minutes. After about half an hour of anodizing I check the temperature of solution. It got 26 degrees Celsius, which is ok. If temperature goes over 40 degrees Celsius, it will evaporate faster and it can crystallize and become useless. As I said, that process should last about an hour, but this time I'll try with only 35 minutes, so the analyzed layer will be thinner. Turn off the power supply, disconnect the wires and rinse the parts with water again. After analyzing process, the part loses shine and got a bit whiter color. Next step is coloring. If you want natural color of anodizing, skip that part and continue with sealing. Proper way of coloring is that we prepare a container of destillated water with mixed color pigment and then soak the part until we get the color we want. We can use many colors to do that. One of them is red dye colors for clothes or the powder egg color. I hear that the colors for refill printers also are great, but I got the best result with using eatable airbrush colors, which is liquid and got lot of tiny pigment inside. More time you soak the part into colored water, more intense the color will be. We can see here, if I just soak a bit, the part is lightly colored. If that's the result we want, just seal into water. But if you want to get more intense color, soak for about 30 minutes. Tiny holes into part which we make with analyzing attract more color pigment, so the color will look more intense, deeper, darker, whatever. But I like that liquid color because I can speed up that process by simply pure a few drops of color direct into part, and so it become fully colored in a moment. After we got wanted color, boil some fresh water and put the part into for a few minutes to boiling. Some color will disappear or it become a bit lighter, but that's normal. Actually I do coloring and sealing in same step, because I got better result. 
Firstly put some distillated water in a pot and start heating. Then pour a few drops of color direct into part and then just put the part into hot water. And when the parts start boiling leave it for a few minutes. It's easier because we skip one step and it, I get better result if sealing colored water. With anodizing we make tiny holes on surface of aluminium. Into coloring step color pigment stuck into that holes and with sealing which is simply cooking the part into boiling water we close that holes back so the holes will close and catch the color pigment into and the part get it shine back. That's it. After that rinse and cool the part with water and then wipe excess color with a towel. You can also slightly polish if you want more shiny part. If something went wrong just return to step 1 and sodium hydroxide will remove any oilizing, also industrial one. But solution will become dirty so I got special container of sodium hydroxide for removing old anodizing. I really like that playing with colors. We can make wide spectrum of colors with only one color, from light to dark. I try also edible colors in a paste shape. All work nice except black one. So far in all these years I can't get a nice black anodizing. Because black color doesn't exist, but it's just mixture of fully other colors. So in my case the part only take red pigment out of black color. But while making this video I'll try something new. Just for fun I mixed red, blue and black color, soak the part into and cook. I couldn't believe while I pulled out nice deep black part. One more thing, if you need more parts exact same color, do it all together. Anodize them together and color them together. So you do everything exact same amount of time. Other way there is no way to get same color twice. That's it about anodizing aluminium at home. I make my holders a few different colors. Anodizing is far from perfect, but I really happy with the result. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. For the end I make the last detail on my holders, by engraving them with diode lasers. If you didn't see it already, you're welcome to watch the video about making that holders. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.